Well, um, you know, I grew up in Española, and I've uh, lived there all my life, and um, I'm 56, and what I've seen in the last 50 years that I remember is that, like any small town uh, that is between two very important towns, Española is between Taos and Santa Fe, there's a lot of influence uh, for growth. And uh, the way Española has been growing in the last 20 years is uh, leaning a little bit more and more towards a big box growth. Mm. So once we got our Walmart, um, it wiped out, really did wipe out a lot of small stores. And so what I was noticing in the last few years is that um, along with the small stores being wiped out uh, comes the, you know, the slow disappearance of the original culture of Española. Mm. And the original culture of Española is uh, an agricultural culture. It's a trilingual Spanish, English, and Tewa culture. And um, it's a very old-timey, uh, steeped-in-tradition culture. That is the basis of Española. So in the last um, couple of years, every time I would drive through the heart of Española, which is um, what we call the old bridge, the Oñate bridge, the original bridge, every time I drive through that part of town, I'd actually like feel almost to the point of hearing a uh, spirit saying, somebody better tell the story of old Española or it's... Look at that. Wow. Or it's going to go away. And so um, I just had that thought and I thought, well, maybe I'll write a book, maybe I won't. But everybody, you know, I think everybody thinks about writing a book at some point or another. But the amazing thing that happened was that um, about two years ago, I was contacted by Arcadia Press, who publishes these uh, Images of America books. And uh, out of the blue, I got an email that said, we were interested in doing a story about Española, a book about Española. Are you interested? And um, I didn't hesitate, even though I know practically nothing or knew nothing about writing a book. It was really as if spirit caught on and said, yeah, let's go. Let's go now. Let's move right now. And I feel that I, once I said yes, it was um, like getting in a, on a runaway train and holding on for dear life and everything fell into place for this book and the beauty of the book is it left enough uh, residual um, product or residual idea that there's room for another book and I'm hoping that I may do another book in the next couple of years and I'm gonna call that book uh, tentatively First Family and I want to highlight uh, all the first families of the valley going all the way back to uh, pre-Oñate, so pre-European, and come through the ages with, uh, if I can, the influence of the native people on the valley of Española, and then the first families that came, many of them with the Oñate expedition in 1598, and whose families still remain a vital part of the valley.